we are recording this. Uh, good point. Uh, and yes, this will be available on YouTube uh, uh, after uh, the session is gone live. Uh, so you, all of you can watch it again on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, I think we've got quite a few people still joining in yesterday. Hi, Rohan. Hi, Sonali. Hi, Anita. Sunita. Hello, Ashni. Hi, Rachna. Hi, Nidhi. Hi, Pearl. Sorry, I'm so used to doing this. I have to say hi to everyone. Hi, <laughs> Pearl. Hi, Rublin. Hi, Shalini. <laughs> you can't keep taking over my hosting duties today. Sorry. <laughs> Very sorry. Last time that was, and I'll. Yeah, over to you. No problems. No problems. So uh, today, everyone, we have a really exciting session, and I could see that even in some of our alumni WhatsApp groups, everyone was constantly going, looking forward to this session for quite some time. So I think, Sonia, you have a big fan following, which has been waiting for you to do this session. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, have thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. And have I you didn't... Been out for some reason? Sorry? Have you been purposely holding out and not doing a session for so long? Oh, no, no, nothing of that sort. It was just, there were so many amazing speakers and I thought everyone is kind of uh, done of listening to me. So, <laughs> was just giving everyone a break from um, me personally. So, yeah. Wonderful. So, everyone, today's topic is about how to start an image consulting business. But I think the lessons that Sonia is going to teach today go beyond even image consulting and probably even go to any kind of business right Sonia? True. very true means it's the learnings are maybe a few points here and there would be very specific to image consulting but overall if you go through what i'm talking about today you can apply it in any business possible so. great uh, okay so i think it's high time that we get started with this session uh, just as tradition uh, i would like to first begin with by introducing our special guest uh, Sonia. Thank you so much for taking out the time to come and do this session for all of us on Facebook. And uh, for everyone who already knows Sonia and probably thinks they know everything about Sonia, I should be able to give you some inciting insights about her. So uh, for all of you who don't know Sonia, uh, Sonia is a certified image professional, the first one in India chapter uh, from AICI, which is Association of Image Consultants International. Uh, she has been in this domain now close to over a decade or even more than a, than a decade. Uh, Sonia has probably worked with all the major um, top companies in India, uh, but also if or not, a lot of you might not know that Sonia has also trained in Southeast Asia. She's also tr uh, trained in North America. She's also trained in Malaysia recently only, uh, uh, not Malaysia, sorry, Mauritius. Uh, so there's a lot of places outside India that Sonia has also trained in. Uh, Sonia works with a lot of individual clients and I think that's where her passion really is and uh, she really enjoys that entire aspect of working one-on-one -on -one with clients. Uh, so a large number of her clients are large CEOs, executive, uh, senior executives and leaderships of major companies as well as some celebrities and uh, socialites I guess. Uh, so that's a little bit about Sonia. Uh, something that you probably don't know about Sonia, that she's been an entrepreneur much before what you know about her today. So Sonia is currently, uh, uh, for most of you to know, is the founder of Indian School of Image Management. She is also the founder of uh, Beposh Image Consultants. Uh, she, but these two have not been her only entrepreneurial journeys. For a lot of you who don't know, Sonia started her first business at the age of 15, where she worked on setting up a school of her own uh, for kids. And this was a full functioning school, right, Sonia? Yes, it was still fifth standard, and uh, fourth standard, actually. Yes. Wonderful. So Sonia has been in the education space and an entrepreneur much before any of us knew. So from the age of 15, Sonia has been doing this. Um, so that's a little bit about Sonia. I'm sure all, all of you know her much more than what I've already explained. Uh, but Sonia, today's topic is something which is, I think you're the best domain expert at this. And over to you. Thank you, Ashwin. And uh, thanks for uh, making and uh, giving my introduction. That was a wonderful introduction and uh, sharing the secret that this is not my first entrepreneurial journey. So yes, I started my first business at the age of 15 and that was also a school. Uh, it was for, yes, kids, but... Uh, yeah, life uh, took a, you know, 
long turn, a full circle and came back to another educational institute. So what I'll be sharing with you today is yes, um, how to start an image consulting business. But as I, uh, as Ashwin said, actually, that uh, the learnings from today is something that you can apply in any business whatsoever. So the format, the uh, steps that we'd be talking about today is uh, applicable for anything. So, and today what I will be sharing is not from just deriving out of my image consulting, um, you know, experience, but it is also from the entire experience. Maybe something I'm deriving from uh, my first experience of starting this school also. So yes, let's hope that you all can find some insightful information from this session. And uh, I welcome questions. You all know that about me. So do ask away and anything and everything you want to know about how to start a successful consultant. Okay, so let's get started. If you want to take a few notes or something, please go ahead and do that. So our topic for today is to how to start an image consulting business. Uh, one thing that I want to share over here, it is about how to start. So we are going to be talking about or, um, you know, taking into aspect that you are just starting out, you don't take already have. There could be a few of you, um, few of you who are watching right now, you could be in that start out phase, like you would have already started out, but there are phases to even starting. It's not, as I keep saying that um, starting something or lodging something uh, is not an, you know, event. It happens with number of steps. So you could be in step one or step three or step five, but it is all about the beginning or the beginner stage. Okay. So yes something could apply to you if you feel that you are in step 1.2 or 1.3 write that down in the comments so that i know exactly which step you are in or which phase you are in and then i can give you answers according to that okay so let's begin now what are the different steps um <clears throat> when we talk about image consulting business of course um there are a lot of things that are involved in it and we talk about it you, a lot of you who are there right now uh, in the viewers, you know that we could take you through this with this entire business, uh, you know, support or business smart session, which is a long and a very, um, you know, exhaustive session about everything on how to start your business. But today I'll be covering a few steps about it. The first step when you have to start your business, there are five steps to start your image consulting business. The first one is education and training. We'll be going through each one of them in detail. Once you complete your education and training in image consulting, then you move on to step number two, which is um, yeah, plan and test. And after that, you move on to the step number three, which is going live, not live on Facebook, but I'll explain you what. Uh, moving on to getting your clients and finally moving to the step number five, which is how to grow. Okay, so let's begin. And I'm going to be talking about the first phase, which is education and training. Now, that is a number one step of starting an image consulting business. A lot of blogs, a lot of articles online, which were old articles, they say that you don't have to have any formal education into image consulting business or into image consulting as a profession. That's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. People who have attended this um, image consulting course, all of you from around the world who are watching right now, you know what it, what is the subject? What all do we learn? Okay. So saying that you don't need uh, a training into it, it is wrong. Maybe. 20 years earlier or 30 years earlier, you don't need that. But in today's time and era, you do need education and training in this domain if you are serious about it. So that brings me to step number one, your first step of education and training and the most ground, uh, you know, right from the beginning, like, uh, you know, just starting your base is to study an AICI approved image consulting course, read it. There's no ifs and buts about it. You, if you are serious about this in, uh, business, about this industry, find a program which is AICI approved. There are so many around the world. Go on the AICI website, find a course that is AICI approved. Why I'm telling you AICI approved program? 
Number one, AICI, as you all know, is the world's largest body and it is it provides approval and accreditation to institutes around the world for their image consulting program. To achieve that approval, you need to go through or the institute need to go through a level of standards. They need to match those standards. That's when they get the certification. And that means whatever you're learning, be it in China, be it in Australia, be it in India, be it in Europe or be it in North America or Latin America, your education is the same. You are getting the same standard of learning. That's why it is important. Second reason that you want to learn an AICI approved program is that it is taught by AICI CIPs or CIM. If any CIP or CIM is watching right now, that will be my honor to have you on my life. But if you are watching right now, I know you would agree with me that it takes a lot of effort to create or to achieve the CIP certification. These people know what they are talking about. They have done it. They have created the program and that's why they are teaching you. There is a lot of credibility that they bring in, a lot of experience that they bring in. So do not, if somebody say buy something online for like 10 hours of trading and 10,000 rupees of the program, which is not approved, well, it's not worth it. If you're serious about it and you're not taking it as a hobby or you're not thinking about it as a, just like I'm going to just think of maybe do it or not do it. If you're not in that and you, want to do this properly, you want to do it as a full-time career, look for a program which is ESCI approved. That's your step number 1.1. Moving on. You need to also, while you're doing the program, when you enroll for um, you know, your image consulting program, you realize, and this is the beauty of the program, that it is all about self-discovery, right? So you need to first Implement everything that you're learning on yourself. I cannot actually stress on this thing any further. It is the most crucial thing. Anybody who's learning the program but is not going through that entire journey of self-enhancement and not working on their own self will not be able to take the next step of starting their career. So take that first step. Work on whatever you're learning in the classroom. Start working on yourself. And when you do that, you realize that there's so much more that you don't know. Or maybe there's so much more that is not your subject matter expertise or you are not good at. For example, makeup was something that I had no idea. My friends actually used to laugh on my makeup skills when I before I took uh, image consulting. Right. So when I started working or I started learning my image consulting program, I took up a course to just learn basics of makeup because I knew that I need to get my hands on it. I need to learn a little bit more than everybody else because that was my first exposure to makeup. Right. If you feel that you want to get into corporate training and you want to be a public speaker, you want to do a lot of training programs, a lot of workshops but you are not good with public speaking, invest into public speaking program. So find these related subjects that you're not good with or they are not your area of expertise or they are maybe your point of weaknesses. So find those subjects and invest into those related subjects. I'm not talking about from the business perspective. Please understand that this is not that I will be able to offer soft skills to someone else. I'm talking about from the point of view that I will be able to enhance my own skills in soft skills, in makeup, voice modulation, maybe fitness and yoga. If you are thinking of doing that, you need to look presentable. You need to work really hard. You need to have your mental well-being in absolutely you know, pristine state. So yoga, nutrition, wellness, all these things are also important. So invest into all the things, all the related subjects that can make you look, walk, talk or present yourself like an image consultant. All right. So that's your step number 1.2. Whichever step you are in right now, please put it in the comment. I want to see where do you feel that you are in. Most of you uh, who are there, I can see you on the watch list. So a few of you are there in step 1.1, which is learning or uh, going through the image consulting program but if you are have completed that and you are in the next phase write that down i want to see that in comments okay 
the third step of phase one is to gain experience under supervision what does that mean maybe pick up few projects or just offer to learn under someone it is not necessary and it is not important that the minute you have done your image consulting program next thing money i know money is important but take a breather take a moment and just learn the skills of actually delivering the services right so it takes a lot of effort to go from learning the course to get the clients and start getting that money or that check from your bank there is a lot of steps which are involved in that okay and the step number 1 after completing your certificate should be to gain experience under somebody who is doing this already just offer to help just offer to observe be there for them right you will pick up so much more under somebody's guidance and under somebody's mentorship just pick up a few projects we offer fellowship you all are aware about that we give you opportunities to just come along with us and just observe how things are done so take up those opportunity reach out to people that i am looking for something like this then you will be able to deliver it you will learn which are the areas that i am not good at okay so that's your phase 1 which is education and training number 1 that you need to do a program aici approved image consulting program 1.1 1.2 take programs which are related to the main topic to image consulting and step number 3 gain experience under supervision once you have done that your phase 1 is complete okay please put it in the comments if you are in phase 1 i would like to see who all are there in the phase 1 right now so now when your phase 1 is complete you have your certificate you are all set you want to go out in the market and you are having these dreams of getting you know paid and their clients lining up in front of you but does that happen that does not there is again as i said lot of steps that you need to complete before reaching that if you have a lot of clients ready to sign up wonderful there could be a situation like that and that's amazing that's really really good pick that up and maybe fast forward all the steps that are there supposed to be there in the middle so that brings me to step number 2 plan and test this step is something where you will be planning out your business don't jump directly into going and looking for the client plan out first you know there's the quote or uh, by einstein that if i have a problem i would think you know i would and i have one hour to solve that problem i will spend 59 minutes to you know think about the problem and one minute on the solution or one second on the solution right so that's how much planning is required that exactly shows that how much you have to plan or test in the back end before going out in the market so this phase is all about you need to plan you need to see what works for you and what does not work for you so plan number in plan number 2 the first thing find your niche everyone comes back to me and says sonia i don't want to do you know personal consultation i don't want to do corporate trainings or i just want to do corporate training or i just want to do image uh, personal one on one consultation and this is how for some reason we have you know created these two boxes one on one consulting and corporate training and these are the only things that image consultants do no that's that's the format of delivery please understand those are the format or maybe your target audience your target audience is a huge crowd which you are delivering workshops or training to via you know uh, in a large format or your target audience is one person at a time but that's not your niche that cannot be defining your niche right because to that large audience your niche could be makeup so to that large audience you could be training or giving trainings on makeup or that large audience could be taught you know um something which is um, into communication or body language for that matter so those are the format of delivery or your target audience that's not your niche when i say find your niche what you are good at what is something that is truly you know important to you or something that you are really amazing at so find that secret mixture okay find something that is really you know 
you need to yourself. Now, everyone talks about it, that find your USP. USP is the word, unique selling proposition, right? So find your USP and try to find that secret mixture. But how do you do that? So I'm going to tell how to find your secret mixture today. So the ingredients to that secret mixture is you need to sit and think what I already know. That means, for example, if you are already a fashion designer, and a lot of you are right now, I can see, a lot of you are fashion designer. That's something that you already know, okay? And then, what I learned. So in image consulting course, what did you learn? Now you combine both the two things together. What do you get? So your knowledge from fashion designing, right? And what you learn, so your knowledge from image consulting, and what do you get out of that together? That is your niche. So a person who is a fashion designer as, and has studied image consulting and is an image consultant would combine and to be actually be able to dress people up as per their body shape, their color, their style, their roles, their personality, and will be able to create clothes for them because they know how the designing work, they can, you know, construct clothing. That's their secret mission. Why to try to get into something else because everybody else is doing that's working for them. You know, that's working for them. Don't try to copy it because that's the worst thing you can do. Find something that is unique to yourself. That's the most important thing for you. And now, once you have found the niche, you want to go out and explain that to masses, that's corporate training. And if you want to go out and explain it to one person at a time, that's individual, right? You're a soft skills trainer, or maybe you are somebody who's, um, um, you know, somebody who's already been training into communication, or you have been a trainer of English language. You, that is something you already know. And then you learn image consulting. You combine that together and your niche could be communication, maybe verbal communication. So find that niche. That's the most critical thing. Delivery does not matter. You can deliver in any format. Don't restrict yourself. Don't decide that I'll only restrict to one-on-one -on -one or I will not do corporate. No. Do that later on. Do that once you have got a lot of clients and you have the ability to pick and choose. But right now, just be restricted in terms of your niche. Okay? So that's critical. 2.1 is to find your niche. Next thing, you create your service offering. Now, when you have to create your service offering, what do we do? This is what I did and this is everyone else out there would be doing. We need to create a service offering. We go on a thousand different websites. We search which image consultant is doing this, which soft skills trainer is doing this. Okay, they are offering these 10 things. This person is offering this five thing. This one looks really attractive. Let me do that. Again, this is not your service offering. Remember, nobody can be better in doing what you do better than you, basically, right? You can be the best in what you do. Nobody else can be. Right? So create your own service offering. Again, if you have to now sit down, and think, what is my service offering? The reason we go on Google and search everybody's website, good, do your research, that's critical. Again, that's very important to know what everyone is doing in the market. But that should not be the ingredient to create your service. You should not be just you know, copy or pasting or just creating something what anybody else has created. So how do you create your service offering? For that, remember the power of three. Very, very important. Just sit down, then you have found your niche. Just sit down and think about what are the three things that I'm really good at. Record those three things. And those three things will be your three signature services, signature programs. This is very important, just three. Don't create a huge list of, I can do everything on this planet for you. Clients don't want that. 
when you go on people's website and you get stuck on a particular website, they're talking the same thing. But it is these power of three that actually attract. Think about it, all the websites that you would have searched by now, you would have seen people actually having just three signature programs or three signature offering. Find out three things that you are best at. The first one will be something that is totally something that you can do the best. Nobody else can do it better than you. That's like your most important part of you. Right? So that should be the most number one. That should be your core out of that signature. The next one should be something that you are good at doing. Or you can do it good along with the help of something. And the third one should be just maybe a collaborative thing. Now this power of three can be applied to everything. You can even take your service programs and you can further divide into three of them. Okay, we talk about this a lot into our uh, business smart session. So a lot of you would go through it later on. But remember the power of three. Create only three signature programs and that should be it. Nothing beyond, nothing less than that. Don't create 10, 15 of them because when the person comes on a website, they don't know what they will get. But if you have only three things, they will remember, I will get A, I will get B, I'll get C. The A, B, C, right? That could be one cause. Appearance, behavior and communication. Easy, easy one to begin with. If you don't know exactly what to offer and you feel that you can also offer behavioral and communication, start with that. Right, so remember the power of three, three signature offering. If your niche is only in appearance, then do something which is styling, wardrobing, color, or maybe color, styling, personal shopping, anything, just three of them, stick to three. Yeah, so that's your second. Third one is collaborate. And I don't know how many times I've told you this and I keep repeating this over and over again. And I will quote Steve Jobs over here and he said, great things in business are never done by one person. And what I want you to ask yourself today, I want you to quickly answer in the chat. I have my, I can see the comment stream right now. Are you in this industry for a short term or a long term? I'll give you a minute and I'll wait for the answer. Are you here in this industry, image consulting industry or soft skills industry for a short term or a long term? You can give one. You can't say both. <laughs> so give me an answer quickly. Short term or long term? Come on. Long term. Upasana replied long term. Preeti long term. Wonderful. <clears throat> Who else? Revati, long-term, Sunita, long-term, Shalini, long-term, great. Everyone is saying undoubtedly long-term. Rublin, yes, everyone is here for long-term. Rohan, long-term, Farina, long-term, <laughs> Rina. <laughs> okay, that, your long is way too long-term. Okay, Shraddha is for long-term, Shilpa is long. Everybody is here for a long-term, right? Yes, Chana, wonderful. Great, great, great. Thank you, super long-term. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So yes, we are here for a very long term. We are serious about it. This is our passion. That's why you are doing it. That's why you invested so much time and effort. And so many of you who have, who are alumni, who are watching, I know how much effort you put into it to learn, to do your assignments, to, you know, go through the whole process. We are all here for a long term. Yeah. And I want you, I'm sure all of you who want to get it in, get in this field for a long term, if you're thinking of a long term and all of you are thinking of a long term, think about this entire profession as a relay race. You know what a relay race is? Yeah. There's a baton that's passed on and then another person takes it and just runs away. So think about it from, as a relay race versus the sprint race. Now, let's see what is a sprint race. Sprint race is one runner. What is the distance? 100 meters, 200 meters, maximum 400 meters. It's all about you. You're alone. 
you run in the same track, wonderful. Sounds good, no? You're alone. It's all about you. It's just you, 100 meters going super fast. Sounds really good. And you run in the same track over and over again, work extremely hard, do the same thing, and you create a world record. Yay! <laughs> Finally, someone better, someone more resourceful, someone more talented comes along and breaks your world record. That's the sprint race. When you are all alone, you are trying to do the same thing over and over again. And one day somebody else comes in and breaks your world record. That's where the power of collaboration comes in. Look at relay race. Relay races start from 400 meters. They can go up to cross country. So we're talking about hundreds of kilometers. You can run, you can ski, you can bike, you can do combination of all of them, right? That's the power of relay race. And you are there for long term. You can just go on and on and on. If you want to take yourself far, you want to lift yourself up, you have to start lifting someone else up also. Okay, so maybe just collaborate with people, start working, looking at people and, uh, you know, other image consultant, fashion designers, hair and makeup artists, um, you know, retail stores, photographers, there's so many, this is a list, you have been given an exhaustive list also. Think about what are the people who would actually take advantage of collaborating with Okay, so collaboration is the key here. Next point, join industry associations. Find the best of the industry association. A lot of you right now, my viewers are part of ASCI, one of the most world's biggest 37 countries and uh, 36 or 37 countries in city circle. And all of you who are members of it know what is the value that you get out of it when you become a part of an association. You get to learn from people around the world, get to know ideas, get to network and so many more things. It's just amazing. And this is very critical if you do it at the beginning. Don't wait that my business will get started and then I'll join. We are talking about joining the association and not talking about the certification. There's a difference between the two. So join industry association early on. Okay. The next one, because we are still planning, is develop your business plan. And this is the very basic structure. If you want to just see the structure and note it down, make a note of it. Um, you need to write down what is your business overview. So you have figured out what is your niche, right? You have figured out what is the service offering. So find out your business overview. How would you market or sell it? Oops, my presentation is going a little... Let's go back. Okay. You figure out your operation. How would you operate? Will you be having any team? So if you don't have staff to begin with, maybe collaboration could help you manage or run a few operation. Then you plan everything out and how much money would you need to do all this? The finances. This will give you a basic overview of the how to develop your business plan. Business plan is a very important aspect spend time on this don't just directly jump into it this is a basic template if you want to use this please go ahead and use this to start the next is point two uh 2.6 of planning is to work pro bono why because then you will get some time you will get some clients to work on find your friends find your family members who would be able to give in the time also work with them Give them everything that you know. Take beautiful pictures. Get them to write testimonials. Get them to, you know, ask you questions. Grill you. Because when you go through that entire routine, you understand what it takes to actually do the job. And that prepares you for the next step, which is... Oh, so you complete phase two by doing your pro bono. And it prepares you to go phase three, which is go live. And when I say go live, the step number one in go live is to create your portfolio. Now, when you worked with the pro bono client, you got these amazing set of pictures, correct? You got the testimonials, you clicked videos or made videos, you clicked pictures. Put all that together, create a case study. This was my client's issues and problems and I solved it by doing this. This was before and this was after. It's a pro bono, so you should have permission to, you know, showcase the work that you have done. Create a portfolio. That's number one. 
A lot of people go to step number two first and then come to step number one. Create your step one first and go to step two, which is design your website and other business material. Yeah, so your logo, your uh, brand name, your, uh, uh, you know, templates, your stationery, your business cards, every single thing needs to be then get, you have to design, you have to start thinking about what will be the color scheme, what will be the name, what will be the, you know, overall logo or what you stand for. Basically, that's the niche should be visible when you are thinking about designing your website and your business material. We are talking, we are in the industry of image. So everything about your business identity, this is part of your business identity. Everything about your business identity should look like one overall scheme of things. Right? So that's your step number three. Two. Three is develop your social media presence. We spoke about it yesterday. You know what to do. Go on the platforms that were discussed yesterday. Create a whole as uh, Hamel and Neha told you, invest time in a monthly basis. If not, then on a weekly basis and create your entire social media plan. Think about what are the uh, websites that are relevant for me. For example, if you are somebody who wants to be into appearance section, Instagram is a must. If you don't have Instagram profile and you're not active on it, well, fashion is all about pictures. So you're not doing something right there. You are on Twitter. Well, that's not going to work. You are into corporate trainings. You are into, you know, workshops. Then you need to be on LinkedIn. Maybe you need to spend more time over there. You want to be, you know, training uh, people into social etiquette or dining etiquette. You want to target uh, mothers. You want to target kids. You want to target people, everyday people, homemakers, Facebook, nothing better than that. So create your social media presence in all the platform. You don't have to have every single platform, but the one that is critical to or suits your business plan. After that, you need to develop your marketing plan. And this is a wonderful thing that is there. So there are three steps to create your marketing plan. The first one is attract. The second one is engage. And the third one is delight. You want to create your plan to attract one, to attract your customer. Second, to engage your customers. And the third one, to give them that wow, the light feeling that, oh my God, they do this. They really um, remember this. So let's see what are, what are the things that you need to attract. So you'll be doing ads. Yes, you need to spend money. We spoke about it yesterday. Do watch the social media, uh, you know, live that happened yesterday. A lot of information there. Uh, create videos that would attract people. Nowadays, we are more into videos. Otherwise, we just kind of scroll up if there's no content or no picture or video there. Blogging could be another way to attract people. You write about a topic that people are searching for. Social media, content strategy, this is a way to attract people. Engage by sending them emails, by sending them, you know, uh, having conversation with them. Okay. And the third one is giving them wow feeling. And just there are all the options that are there on the screen. You can make a note of it. But just simply to explain you what is delight. Delight is when you open Google on your phone on the day of your birthday and you see those Google with the candles and then you go like, wow, right? Or every single uh, bank wishing you happy birthday on, your, on the day of your birthday. That is the wow that they are trying to create. They are giving you something more than what you have. So sending your client maybe a cake or flowers, or maybe, hey, your birthday is coming up. I'm offering you a free hair consultation. Come over, you must be going for a haircut. Or you need your birthday dress, right? So let's go shopping, complimentary. They like to think about it. If you can do it, why not? People will remember that forever. Right? So think about all the ways, what channel, what platforms you want to use, that's totally up to you. But use the delight tools. So that's your phase three complete. I'm trying, it's a power pack. I know there's so much information and I want to go on and on about each and every phase. There is a lot to talk about, but we are trying to keep up and just finish everything about how to have the whole business plan ready. So phase four, you need to get clients now. You're ready. You're planning. You're going live now. You've gone live. So next thing is how to get clients. Okay. So 
one and this everybody is telling you this everybody would be telling you this and i know a lot of you feel yeah, where to get or where to network trust me if you don't have the network you need to go and create and you will be able to create there's so many ways of doing that just social media in itself is a great way to network with people right if you can't do that there is so many associations i know we are in a lockdown right now but when you join the industry association wonderful way to network join rotary you want to get clients or join vni or rotary club rotary association toastmaster aici there is a list plethora of them associations which are out there right and there are a lot of these groups which are formed in different people it's initiated try to be part of that go to the places that you think you will be able to find your target audience create that network go out and reach pick up the phone and talk to them just putting your post on social media is not going to give you clients please understand that a lot of people tell me sonia i am doing spending so much money on social media and i am not getting clients no that's not going to get you clients that's great to get your brand visibility you need to get moving yesterday the word hustling hustling is for everything pick up the phone and talk to people write emails to people follow up with them drop messages on linkedin get the premium account drop messages to people saying i offer this how many times in a day you do that if you don't do it that's the reason you're not getting clients so you need to go and reach out to people networking is number one thing okay think about your target audience and target those people only okay so networking networking and networking and step number 4 is to repeat step 1 2 and 3 which is networking networking and the next one when you are trying to get the clients it will be very lucrative for getting a large number and trying to get a very large number in the first few years or something but you know those uh, pyramid scheme right like um, lot of brands have that you know one person make two members and the two members make more members that pyramid scheme is applicable even for business for and this is not that you are you know giving some reference fee or something you get your if you want to do something you want to establish something and this rule is for every single thing in your life you want to get something done you just need to get two people to be agreeing and to be doing those things just two people because if the one person alone will do it people will say oh you know that's a one off thing people will doubt it people will think no oh, that's just that person likes to take risk and they like to experiment with but the minute you have two people taking the same thing or doing the same thing that's where they feel that yes this is something interesting now more people are interested about you so you just need two quality those two clients and you need to give them quality service and these two people without even you saying something when you make the work we do is so enhancing so enriching in the lives people transform people just feel that you know you have done some you know you have some magic wand and you have done some magic and you have just helped them transform their lives that's what people think sorry there's a disturbance at my end so when you do that work you give that quality service to your clients and you do it for those two people they without telling you will go out to people and talk about you word of mouth quality will get you the word of mouth okay so that's where how you get more and more clients and step number 3 whatever you are doing keep doing it keep doing it over and over and over again that's the mantra or that's the secret formula for success so when you are on your path to work and you see that hey that person is doing this i should be also doing it and you get distracted you start doing that bit that is where you kind of lose focus don't try to copy if you are good with something people got it you got paid for it keep doing that over and over again there's a theory which is 10000 hours theory if any of you are readers and have read the book outliers And if you have not read it, that's a book that you should read. It's by Malcolm uh, Gladwell, 
and he talks about the 10,000 hours theory that for anyone to become a master in something, you have to spend 10,000 hours doing or practicing the same thing extensively. It says extensively, not just like casually 10,000 hours. So just to give you a number, there are 250 days, working days in a year, approximately. If you're working for eight hours, in all those 250 days, which is Monday to Friday, eight hours, in a year, you still complete 2,000 hours, approximately. Okay? So 2,000 hours in a year, that means we are talking about five years to reach this number, or, you know, the 10,000 number. So it takes you, and that means you're working nonstop, Monday to Friday, eight hours without any break. That's where you reach the master status. As of today, right now, if I'm calculating, I did my little maths and I do have a timesheet. I have spent some 15,400 hours. So in so many years combined together. So that's the amount of effort that you have to put in to reach to a certain level. We all start as an amateur. But the only thing that you need to keep doing is to what you are good at, repeat that. Don't stop. You can't be a master in a day, but you can't be, yeah, but you can master the day. You're getting what I'm trying to say? You cannot become a master in a, in a day's time, but you can master that day and keep doing that for every day possible. Ultimately, you will be an amazing at your job. And that, when they see, when the work, when you become a master, the clients come to you. You don't have to. It becomes a pull. You pull the clients. That's where you choose what, who you want to work with and how you want to work. Okay. So that's your phase number four complete. You have cut the clients. Now what happens? Phase number five. I'm going, I have to go faster because we are losing time and I, oh, there's no questions. All right. The name of the book is uh, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. So that's your answer, Vasna. Phase number five is to grow. Now you have your business, you're getting your clients, you've planned everything, uh, you have gone live, you have to continuously keep growing. It's like any other profession, you cannot stay stagnant. Otherwise you will be into a sprint. Somebody will come who's better, more resourceful, more talented, and your world record will be broken. So how do you, con you have to continuously keep growing. Not only that, once you have given your uh, service to a client, you that's it. If you're not growing, you will be able to do just one thing and you'll never be able to make further difference into a, in your client's life. Right? And there's always an option and there's always room for learning. There's always room for upgrading your skills. So that's where the grow comes in. Step number one. Again, if you are serious about this profession, the most important thing for all of you you want to be in this field for long term, get AICI certification. There's nothing better than getting this credibility in your profile. The CIC certification is one of the best things that you could get, the first level of certification. It immediately puts you in the most, you know, uh, a group of people who are these elite image consultants. And it's not just a badge. It shows that you have worked hard for it. It shows that it shows that you know what you're talking about. So it's not just a badge. You have to put in hours. You need to put in work. You need to create a portfolio. You need to work minimum 300 hours to get that CIC certification. That's what it is all about. So get your CIC certification. Second, continuously learn and upskill yourself. So you learned something great. Now you found your niche. You want to get into communication also. What's next? What's next? We spoke about so many topics in the last 15 days, right? There is, if somebody wants to go into, for example, you all love the wardrobe wellness and feng shui, uh, fashion feng shui topic. If your niche is wardrobing, it's that, if that is your power of three, remember, if that's one of your signature uh, program or signature service offering that you provide wardrobe consultation, fashion feng shui should be the next thing that you should upskill yourself. And similarly, so many other things, right? So find that thing or somebody who's in accessories. Wendy's be spectacular. That's amazing. Puts immediately, you know, to the next level. 
So find yourself and uh, that upskill and continuously learn. And if you are part of AICI, yesterday, all of you who attended uh, Chris's uh, session, you know what I'm talking about. There are mind-blowing, amazingly talented image consultants across the world who have so much knowledge with them and they are ready to share it with you. Right? You all loved it. I could see that. I was reading it in the comments. So that's the beauty of being of reinvesting and learning or being part of a community. The third step, reinvest in your business. I think I spoke about it in my first session that you need to have that mindset of a, of a business person, of an entrepreneur. So that means you need to do two things. You cannot take it as, oh, I got 50,000 rupees from my client. Now, okay, tomorrow I'm going shopping. Great, splurge, that's amazing. But that, give yourself a salary. And remaining amount, reinvest in your business. In fact, for the first three years, you should not think about just anything but just to reinvest in your business, in upskilling yourself, in learning new courses, in becoming part of new association, in getting your certification. And for just a part of it, you should give yourself a salary. When you do that, you're preparing yourself to be a business, business person, right? So get that business mindset. That's very critical. Because a person who would take that 50,000, spend it right away, and then next or 10 days later or next month, oh my God, if you're working just project to project basis, hands to mouth, obviously it's not hands to mouth situation, but if you're just working project to project basis, you will never be able to grow your business. You need to plan it out. So go back to your business planning, create your financial plan, think about all your expenses, Think about for the whole year, if I need to do ads, I need to do operation, I need to pay my, you know, for XYZ software or services, I need to invest this, this is my expense. This is I need to earn every month. If you're earning little bit in this month, the amount needs to carry forward in the next month. Okay, so create your financial plan in a way, and then you have to also see an expense, which is your own salary, which takes care of your own spending or your personal expenses but reinvest in your business. And that's my last point, which is phase five is complete. I hope you learned there was a lot and I could go on. As I said, it is something which is a very in-depth topic, but the few things that I gave you, all the five steps and in all the five steps, the number one that you need to get your education and training sorted and from the best so that is any ASE approved programs because you're learning from the best. Second, that you need to plan and test before you directly go and jump to uh, learn. So you need to do your pro bono work. You need to create your business plan. Okay, so think about that, how much you have to invest into planning. The third one is to go live, so business identity. Also creating a niche, which I told you what I know, what I know and what I've learned, combine it together. In the third one, going live, collaborate. Remember the relay versus the uh, sprint race. In the fourth one, we talked about getting the client. Remember the quality over quantity and 10,000 hours. And in the fifth one, grow. And how do you grow? By having a business mindset. So that's my session for today. I hope you learn something out of this. You could take away some insights. And if I have any questions, uh, Please, I, yeah, please go ahead. Ashwin, do I have any questions? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, wonderful session, Sonia. We are running a little over time. Uh, I know. Yeah, we ran a little over time. So, I'm I don't sorry. know how many questions we'll be able to take. So, uh, please, uh, everyone, uh, share your questions in the comments. I, I see there's been two questions that have come, but uh, I can start with one of the questions that came from... Adarsh, so are you ready? Yes. Okay, so Adarsh wants to know, uh, how do you get clients to write testimonials? Is it, uh, uh, is it on our Facebook or official page or screenshots of messages? Which one is ideal? So two part question. All right, how do you get to write testimonial? Request them that uh, when you are completing or about to complete your service, just request them. 
if you have made a difference in their in overall what they were looking for and you have given the solution they would be more than delighted to write you a testimony now what is the ideal way um, ideal way is whatever is convenient to your client remember that always it should not be inconvenient but yes um, a testimonial which is officially on one of the social media platform is one of the best ways screenshots could be something that is a little bit like you are breaking the rules of etiquette uh, so if you are taking the screenshot you have to take permission but um, yeah social media or if they write your letter like I have few of my clients who wrote me letter on their letter heads and that was the best format of testimonial. So yeah, that's how you get them. I hope that answer your question, Adarsh. Yeah, Any and if I can add, Adarsh, I think uh, definitely don't have the fear. Uh, you just have to ask. There's no Absolutely. harm. Absolutely. True. If you have done amazing and they would be more than delighted. I'm not, nobody has said no to them. All right, everyone, please do send in your questions uh, so we can go through them. Uh, another question comes in from Reena. Uh, she says, uh, hi, hey, Sonia, ma'am, big uh, fan. Uh, like you said, network with people. Honestly, I try this a lot, uh, a lot, but people don't even see your message, mm -hmm. even if your message is filled with value and offers. So what's your suggestion to her? Uh, Reena, it's, it's a clear sign that messaging is not working. As I said, there is not one way to network. There are multiple ways to go out and network with people. If messaging is not working, take up a, pick up the phone, talk to people, write emails to people. Um, if social, go out on social media and just creating in, uh, creating engaging content can help you network. Um, meeting people face to face, and maybe the people that you're sending out the message is not your target audience. So. Maybe go back to the drawing board and step number two, which was planning and think about that. Are you really talking to your target audience? Sometimes even the problem is not that you're not networking or people are not responding. The problem could be that you are not talking to the right target audience, right? So there are a lot of things, but just don't restrict yourself to one thing. It should not be just a message. There are so many ways of reaching out. I hope that answers. Ashwin, you want to add something? No, I think you said it the perfect way. <laughs> uh, all right. So another question, Sonia. Um, so it's, uh, I think it's from Charu. Uh, mm -hmm. It's collaboration can be done with newcomers or should prefer experienced ones. All right. So Charu, uh, I'll give one of the examples of myself. And I hope uh, he's watching right now. Now, I have a very good association with this brand called Herringbone and Sui. And uh, one of the, my format of collaborating with people is that uh, when I'm working with them, I first try and test out the service or what they're offering myself. There is a little investment in it. And sometimes the brand is really good, uh, you know, to even do it with you on a pro bono basis. If they are doing it, nothing like that, but invest that little amount to experience the service yourself. The service that you get decide that what will be the experience that your client gets. So until I'm not satisfied, I don't, uh, you know, really work and collaborate with that brand. Now, why I mentioned Herringbone is that when I started collaborating and when I started my business, Herringbone had also just started maybe a couple of years later and they were absolutely new. So I said, hey, listen, I actually, and this was, I think, Kabir, I started got in touch with and I said see I need to see what you offer and then I will be uh, coming on board and Kabir was so sweet he just came over and he's like experience whatever means these are product he got like I think the entire store came to my office <laughs> and he took me to the whole experience and I was wowed with the amount of dedication and the effort and that was they were just brand new at that time so you never, you don't have to restrict yourself with the experience versus uh, non-experience. It just, you need to try out the service. You need to see if you are comfortable with the service. If you got good results, then you can confidently go out to your client and say that, hey, this person is a great service provider. Why that is critical? To experience it yourself. Because if the service is not correct, people will not say that Herringbone and Sui or anybody else didn't do a good job they will say you didn't do a good job because you recommended them so try it out yourself and then collaborate i hope that answers your question 
I think that's a really well um, answered <laughs> question, Sonia. Okay, so I think uh, we will, because we are really running over time, uh, Sonia, if there are any other questions, everyone, please do send, uh, put them in the comment box right now. You can get Sonia to answer them. I know all of you will think probably you want to WhatsApp it to her, but you never know your question might be helpful to someone else also. So do put I, it up on the comments. And I don't think I got that many questions. So that's a good <laughs> thing and a bad thing. Also. <laughs> okay. So on that point, Sonia, I would want to ask you one last question. Right. And then we will wrap up the session. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so one important learning that you got uh, over the last uh, decade and a half that you've been working in this industry, one learning that you got that you'd like to share with everyone and one major pitfall or mistake that you made that you would tell everyone not to make. All right. Oh, wow. So the first point is uh, that one important learning, right? And the second one is the pitfall. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, um, there are so many. Let me just get my thought. You got me like off guard. Okay. <laughs> All right. My most, actually, this is something that even I say in my quote very often is, um, my most important learning was that you need to really, you know, think about yourself first. It all begins from you. So, and my quote says that you are your most valuable asset and you need to start investing in yourself. And when I say investing, that investment could be in any format through learning, through collaboration, to even self-care and even mental well-being or um, something like that. So, yes, that's my biggest learning that start with yourself. First of all, you are your most valuable asset. So invest in that first and then everything else. And one mistake or something that you would suggest everyone. <laughs> do not do the same mistakes that I did. So I have, I think, spoken, uh, spoke about this a lot in the class that uh, initially the amount of time that I spent in you know, collecting the data and uh, learning, creating my concepts. You all have been given that at this time, because the education in, uh, in image consulting has become so evolved, you are being given everything. And that's a wonderful thing. You have a, I would say, if I have to compare with myself, you have a three years head start. That's a great thing. That means if I have 10 years, you will be able to achieve where I am in seven years. So don't waste and don't sit on it. Just try to start working. Use those templates and improvise it because then it will be just, you know, you'll be able to increase or work on that bit faster or better. You have everything. I think one of the biggest mistakes or one of the biggest questions that come in everyone's mind that I don't have enough. You have enough. You know everything. You are enough. So just start working on that. Wonderful. Thanks, Sonia. Um, thank you everyone for coming for this live session again. Uh, typically at this point of time, we uh, normally thank our esteemed guest who has presented and we would then actually tell you everyone uh, on what next is our uh, knowledge happy hour. This is for everyone to know the 16th consecutive knowledge happy hour that we have done now on Facebook live. Uh, we originally did not plan to do so many of them. But yes. the encouragement from everyone in this community has been pushing us to do these. And uh, that's why we were really wanting some feedback from all of you also. And the last two days, the feedback that you all have shared uh, and the comments that you all have shared have been really positive to us. So uh, we have decided to keep the knowledge happy hour going. But there is one small little change. Uh, we will not be doing this on a daily basis. We will be doing this now on a weekly basis. We will have once a week knowledge happy hours. Don't be upset. There'll be many other few surprises that are coming up. Uh, knowledge happy hour will keep going, uh, but it will happen now next once a week. So stay tuned to our Facebook page. Uh, you will always get the information about the next speaker and what's the next date that when this is going to be happening. Um, all right, so Sonia, anything to add before I ask you this one last question to Bumba to uh, uh, spring up on you? Uh, nothing means I am just uh, really sad that I didn't get questions. <laughs> okay, so now that you're sad, I'm no, 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 that's question. okay. <laughs> okay, all right, what go ahead. We, what can we expect from Sonia over the next decade in three quick words? Wow. 
I just came up with this question just right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> inspire. Okay, this ins- is your rapid fire. Okay. Inspire, influence, and support, I think. Let's grow together, like community, I guess. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Uh, thank you everyone for attending this live session again. Thank you, Sonia, again, taking out your time and doing this thank for you. us. You have a crazy, hectic schedule, which you've been thank managing you. with uh, <laughs> over the last 15 days or 17 days. Uh, and I have just, you. can I just add something? So uh, thank you for it, like to everybody who has been coming online every single day and listening to both of us. In fact, we have been co-host to a lot of sessions. So your support and I know I've read the comments. You have loved it so much. And that's why we want to continue. We had never had this plan of continuing this. We just wanted to do as a one-off thing, like for a small part. But now because of such amazing response, we want to continue this. And maybe even after the lockdown, we may continue this. So you never know. So if you keep showing us your love, we will keep doing this and keep bringing you more and more topic and more and more speakers. So thank you so much for your love and support. Really appreciate it. And hi to my tribe. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, and we shall see you next time on the happy hour next week. Yes. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.